let's talk about loops. Loops. What are loops? Loops are just about everything with programming. Programming in general is loops, right? JavaScript is somewhat of an event-based language, so it's constantly waiting for events to fire. And these loops are checking this. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But loops are often used to loop over data. So you have a bunch of data and you want to show it, or you want to do the same thing 50 times or whatever else. Rather than writing it 50 times, you just use a loop, right? So let's do one right now. Let's do a loop home slice, G Funk era. How about we add 50 billion numbers? Because math is so neato cheeto. And in fact, you would do this in a real world, actually, if you're incrementing things for games, drawing sprites on the screen, etc. So we'll say start x equals zero. And we're gonna do some for it. Now, the syntax has a variety of different syntaxes. There's multiple types of for loops. There's for loops, there's do wows, there's for eaches. I'm just gonna cover the four. It's the most common one you use. If you want to use the other ones, finding stuff on Google that you can copy pasta from is very easy. But I'm just going to give you the for loop because that's the most common and it's very useful and you can use it just throughout everything. The syntax is going to take a few you know, tries for you to actually memorize it. It's cool, man. It'll take a few tries. Don't worry about it. Just go with the flow. So for requires, usually, three starter variables or whatever else. First, the iterator. So we're going to say var i or var l or whatever variable you want. You can make it up. doesn't matter. i is a convention because i stands for iterator or iterate, right? Every time in the loop, it's going to iterate and go up and down. How many times do we loop for? How, how many times? Forever? You know, forever, ever, forever, ever? No. How many times? So I'm going to say while i is less than 50. As soon as i is 50 or above, stop him time. All right. Now. What do we do each iteration? Well, we increment yet another operator, plus plus. We're gonna say each time the loop runs, after it's done, increment i by one, okay? So it'll run, if you do the math, 50 times because we're starting with the i of zero, right? So it's very common to start things with the i of zero because the raise of an index is of zero. Why, what, what did you say? We'll get back to that. Let's do a log to see what this, Silly loop contraption does. I. Remember, we can do two parameters in consoles, right? Let's run this guy. What, what's he gonna do, man? Is he gonna print out stuff? Oh gosh, I still have a breakpoint. Let's hit play. So it's gonna run 50 times. Whee! Right? Now, Jesse, I think you said ran 50 times. It says 49. Right. Well, we started with zero, right? That'll make more sense when you get to the raise. It's a very common convention. Most languages are either zero based or one based. When people say that, they're actually referring to the indices you use to access items in an array, right? Item one, two, three, or item zero, one, two, three. I know, crazy, right? Computer scientists are whack. It is what it is. You just learn to memorize it, go with the flow, follow the conventions. Unless you're in Lua and you can override that behavior and it's weird. Thankfully, JavaScript, most people don't do that. That I know of, in my experience. All right, so that's the console log. Now, let's play with this number. Let's take start x and we're going to increment it. We're going to say start x equals start x plus 3. Console.log start x. Refresh. Check our console. Cool. So you can see it's incrementing the number by 3 every time running the loop a few times. Just to get an idea of how the loop is running refresh the period set a breakpoint and you can see this guy so hit this little next step button so start x we can hover right now he starts at zero okay he's now three because we added three to him and it's going to print it out now watch this it goes again start x is now three he's going to add three now let's take a look at our i our i is one right because we've already incremented after the loop so it start off at zero now it's one now the i will be two Make sense? So it's going to keep going until this guy is 50. And we're down here and we're done. Okay? So that's loops in a nutshell. Loops are a massively awesome workhorse for doing everything from dynamically accessing strings, um, assembling things, iterating over data. Nowadays, a lot of uh, helper tools out there have borrowed some construct constructs, functions, helpers, blah, from like other languages like Python and Ruby. 
So you don't really have to write a lot of for loops for iterating over data. A lot of these libraries nowadays make it easier, but you're still gonna find yourself writing for, for loops for something. So definitely a core construct in your toolbox to know. Cool, so that is for loops. In a nutshell, you can also do backwards loops, while loops, they're whack, I ain't gonna touch that.